Hey, darling, I am just leaving right now. Um, oh, what did you guys do? Have a party? No, I didn't have a party. I I had all sorts of stuff. I found my four amp battery. I dropped off the honey. I got you a cat. I uh, got a rooster. I got a bunch of soap. Apparently I stink or need to wash or something. They're giving me free soap over here. And then I ran into some problems with my trailer and the guy I asked for help has got like, I don't know, electrical testing stuff right on his belt. So he just jumped out and did that right away. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna be home till late, but I don't know, I got, it was good. Oh, I'm gonna plant you some pine trees when I get home. You got what? I'm gonna plant you a couple pine trees when I get home. Whoa! I know, I know you always wanted some, and I, I got a couple of rocks to add to my collection. So. All right, I'll see you in like two hours. I gotta stop and get something to eat on the way home with these boys. Alright, we're gonna make tortillas and some beans. <laughs> bug, right. said, bug said we're hungry. I love you. Bye bye. Oh, well. Alright, send us a picture of the kitties. I can't. Can. I can't. Okay. Bye bye. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <sighs> Hail, sleet, snow, thunder. It's pretty rough out here. The thunder doesn't sound as close as it used to be, but it's still raging. Sounds like a train car is hooking up at a train yard. I left home today and things went absolutely crazy. I'm bringing home a rooster. I'm bringing home a cat. I'm gonna get my wife back. She once gave me a cat and then took it away. And I took it kind of hard. I'll get into that in a minute. But I'm gonna bring her a cat and I've got emergency road flares. And I'm still not even home. I don't know what else could possibly happen, but I'm excited. You guys gotta check this out. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I am Papa Pepper, and this one is gonna be crazy. Wow. But it's also gonna be kind of some story time, but there is a lot going on here. If you guys like our channel, if you like our family, this is gonna be worth the watch. And yeah, check this out. Yeah, that's a lot of honey. That's a lot of honey? Yeah. It really is. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper and one of the things you may hear me periodically talk about in on this channel is the idea of buying in bulk. Um, <laughs> I actually have over 50 pounds of beeswax and like 16 buckets, five gallon buckets of honey in the back of my truck right now. That may seem a little extreme, but I'll tell you what, it is buying in bulk. And what happened is we have our own bees but we're new at it, so we're not exactly generating more than enough honey that we need on our own property. So we still have to outsource that. So rather than going to the 
you know, store and getting a pint or a quart every time I want some more honey, what we like to do, and we have for years, is to pick up a five gallon bucket at a time. And honey's one of those things that doesn't really go bad. So if I buy it now, I could eat it, you know, when I'm 90, and there would be no difference really from how it is right now. It's not gonna go bad, it's not gonna rot, it's not gonna spoil, it doesn't need, you know, refrigeration. So if I'm able to get honey, and get into my possession, it'll be there when I need it. And I think that with the way that we substitute it for sugar and a lot of things and other stuff, you know, my problem is not gonna be getting too much. And you might think, well, having 15, 16 buckets worth of uh, honey in five gallon buckets, isn't that too much? Possibly, but this isn't all for me. So a friend of mine recently got a hold of me. He was gonna go do a honey run. Uh, he's gotten stuff from this guy before, which means I've gotten stuff from this guy before. And he says, hey, you want in? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, if I'm running out there, do you know anyone else who might be interested? So I said, you know what? I think I have a couple of friends. Obviously I had a couple of friends, but a number of these are gonna be for us and my family too. And the cool thing is if you're dealing directly with someone who's producing, you can cut out all the upcharges that you're gonna get in between there. You know, if, if the producer sells to a distributor and then the distributor sells to some, you know, outlets, it gets marked up every step of the way because everyone needs to kind of take their cut. If they're doing this financially, they're going to be doing it to make money. So they're going to have to add money to their cost each time. And if we can just cut those middlemen out, that's a great opportunity for us. Now this, I've got a little bit of uh, distribution to do. Um, I'm just doing it at cost for some guys, you know, but I just want to run around see some good friends of mine Bless them with something that was a huge blessing to us and then you know, they're gonna do the same thing They just enjoy seeing us hanging out with us. So it's a good excuse And I do look forward to the day when our honey production gets up to the point that we're gonna have extra produced right here on our homestead Do you think you can? Yes. Honey, I'm home. Here's your cat. Happy birthday. Is my cat happy birthday? Yeah. Do on to others. Do on to others. Where did that cat I didn't come say from? kitty. I said cat. <laughs> What's the cat's name? I was at a friend's house and they're like, hey, you want to take a cat home with you? And I said, yes. Yes, I want to take a cat home. And then he goes, what, really? I said, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I've been through this before. It looks like a smoky, uh, smoky, smoky T-bones. -bones. <laughs> yeah, so there you go, now you're a cat lady. How okay. do you like that? We like it. So you might want to keep it kind of caged up or we got to home it. We have to let um, it understand. I would go a couple days. Okay. And um, right now it does not play well with others. So it's a project pet oh, for you. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, that, well, that, that, I'm home. We want it to not play well with mice. <laughs> right? Oh, what a crazy, uh, darling, I have so much for you. So much for you. The table's not cleared. Clear the table, just, you're gonna love your life. Ate our dinner. Papa came home. Okay, I'm feeling better after eating those bean tacos. My stomach That would make better. sense, good. I got some meow mix. I don't know what flavor it likes, so I just went with original. Cause I looked at the cat and it looked original. Is it a uh, male or a female? It's a female. Okay. I was thinking Megan would be a good name. Oh, I gotta throw up. <laughs> That's probably just probably just a hairball. We can't do that, darling. Cause you're a cat. Hey, no. careful, buddy! Don't put your Maggie, fingers. Maggie. Hey, little man! Don't put. He's gonna clean up the floor already. What a guy! You can name it Maggie. Maggot? No, Maggie. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Maggie. So, on our last culling day, um, we really had to shrink down our our amount of roosters, and we saved one that was kind of of the Bard Rock flavor. He was what, 75%? It's about 75% Bard Rock, but I wanted some just to kind of keep having those striped babies like that that are predominantly Bard Rock. Bard Rock are a good breed in my mind and it just died. 
which meant we had none. Remember, two is one and one is none. That's what happened here. When did that thing die? Like two days ago, three days ago? Yesterday? My life travels way too fast if that was only yesterday. I thought that was like two or three days ago. Whoa. Yesterday that barred rock rooster died. Right, yesterday. That was yesterday. Well, today I wound up somewhere and um, was hanging out with a couple friends. I, I passed by their area. They were next door. Got to say hi to them. Um, they're the ones who use like a, a super old school um, incubator. Um, they wound up with some of Bobblehead's um, eggs before. He, they actually came down and helped me move a food forest at Jeff's. And uh, I passed by there and they were in the process of culling their roosters. They were selling some off and then they were gonna eat the rest besides their own keepers. And um, I had my eye on this one as a replacement because we just lost the one yesterday. And as it turns out, their son goes, well, I'll just give it to you. And I said, really? You're not even gonna charge it? You're selling these other ones? He says, no, for you, you can have it. I said, well, I'm gonna remember you. You know, sometimes I'll do something kind for somebody and they'll be like, oh, well, how much you want for us? Just remember me. You know, there might be a time they're just gonna need to remember me and, uh, you know, put a little special spot in their heart for me. So that's what this guy did. And check this thing out. So this is a replacement. He doesn't, I don't think he has a name. Do you want to peek? This looks like, uh, it looks like, what's his name? Well, we want a peek too. That looks like, um, what's his name? Ted Long. Danson? Long legs, that guy. This looks like the tall cop. And, um, yeah. I can find out what breeds, uh, he is. It's, it's predominantly barred rock, but there's something else mixed in. Uh, yeah, no, no. I forget. Ours was a barred rock speckled Sussex. Yeah, this one's not that. Can you lift him up for me for a minute? It's a good looking rooster, guys. We lost one yesterday, and then today we get the replacement. Look at that. Whoa. How you like him? Looks pretty good, huh? It's a good sized rooster. I think he'll do the job. He will replace. The only thing that doesn't look like our rooster was he had a, he has a flat comb. Looks oh, like yeah. The other rooster we butchered, yeah. Oh, this guy, yeah. But this guy has all these here. So he's a good looking guy. I think he'll be a good replacement, yeah. He's definitely got the uh, the colors I like. What do you think, little man? That's a rooster, dude. That's a rooster, dude. Oh, he's watching. What do you think? Do you like it? So one thing that we like to do when we introduce a new bird to the flock is first of all, uh, quarantining is a good idea. If you're bringing a new animal onto your homestead and your stuff, put it alone by itself uh, first is the best thing to do. With this one, um, I, it's a trustworthy source. Um, they run really good with their birds, so I'm okay with introducing this to my flock. And the one thing that we like to do then, after you know, we either have the quarantine time, or in this case, bypass it, um, is to introduce them when, children? In the night, in the night time? In the night time. Um, if they're gonna have an issue and they're awake and you throw a strange bird in, they kind of can uh, get angry. Um, but if they're all sleeping and you stick another one in next to them that just falls asleep, then they just all wake up together. And uh, sometimes that can be a happier life. Can you uh, puff that Yeah, neck for me again? Look at that. What a creature. Dude, it looks like the same size as you, little man. Hey. He's not gonna like that. Don't pull on that. I agree. So why don't we go sneak him out right now? Uh -oh. oh, yeah, there's a couple guineas. See, those are the ladies there. That type of ladies we want him procreating with. I think there's some room down here, child. Put him down on this one here. We'll let him sit there and they'll wake up there tomorrow. That'll work? Mm -hmm. I think so. Nice job. You guys still use that doorstop? 
Uh, yes, but this door is a little bit broken, actually. Oh, yeah, I got to fix that part. Uh, another thing that happened on my trip is I passed a place where this guy kind of as his ministry likes to buy a bunch of bulk food that's going bad and hand it out for free or donations. Um, you can see not all this lettuce is prime, but one thing we've learned and in talking with him in person, he's like, yeah, just take it if you got friends, family, others, strangers, hand it out. So some of the stuff that's not quite as good as we would like We'll give to the animals too, but I got five heads of lettuce. These are collard greens. A number of them look good enough for us. Um, and then we can also get some of the chickens and stuff like that. And you know what else you could do with greens like this? <laughs> you could juice them. So that would be good. Um, and then in the bottom, this celery might be just animal stuff, but there is some of these, I wasn't sure. There are apple slices, but this stuff sits out unrefrigerated in the sun all day. I couldn't really tell because it was nighttime, but there's all these little bags of cut up apple slices. It looks like they're probably not going to be for us, but um, tomorrow as a project, we can give them to some of the animals, okay? Yes, sir. So you guys will have to open some of those bags and stuff like that. But some of those lettuce and collard greens look good. Oh, and I said you could maybe juice them, right? Guess what I got for you today? Juicer? Yeah. When we came into our awesome giant pile of organic carrots for like dirt cheap, um, we gave some to some friends that were passing through and they mentioned juicing some. And she was like, oh, I wish I could juice some. And they're like, well, we have an extra juicer. So I saw them today. I'm gonna bring that in a second. I'm gonna sort this and we'll store some outside in the coolness and then we'll go from there. Well, this is their backup juicer that they did not use anymore, oh. but why is it better than our juicer? Because we have none. Because we have none. We don't even have a blender. <laughs> oh, you know what else though? What? Could you check that bag? You mentioned something when you were trying to cook a cow head recently. And I happened to stop in at a Mexican store and I thought maybe, hey. just maybe what? some of this assortment could be what she was thinking. I'm not oh. sure if anything was. Um, Not quite the same. Possibly this one here. That's what I was thinking. Looks this like kind of looked like some pan the dulce. The sweet bread that I was talking about, it looks like a pillow, like this. And then does it get like? It has like squares on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen pink, those before. Light pink. There's a like a white or tan, and then a brown colored ones. Okay. So. I've seen those before, but I didn't see those there. After like a super long adventure today, um, we were famished. We really were. One of our friends, the ones with the juicer, darling, they yeah. heated up some chicken noodle soup for us that they made from scratch. So while we were there, I, uh, I picked up my IBC tote. Well, that honey run trip gave me two awesome opportunities too. One is this insulated 275 gallon IBC tote. Um, I actually bought this not quite a year ago, but some guys I knew were picking up a pile of them and I said, yeah, give me one. And it took me so long to pick this up that the guy who uh, footed the bill initially, I guess I tried to pay him two or three different times. Um, <laughs> just because like, oh, I got to pay him for that. He goes, no, 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 you already did them. Like, oh, okay. Well, I got to pick it up then. Uh, but this is going to be nice. And one thing about the insulated one is light doesn't get to it. A lot of people pick up the other ones and then they um, paint them black so that they don't get like algae and stuff growing in their water catchment. Here, this is already completely covered and it is insulated, but water can get in from the top. So this really needs to be under cover um, or water will get down into the insulation and that could start causing some trouble. And the other thing is uh, I was offered some of this pegboard. Now this pegboard is cool for a couple of reasons, but one is, as I continue with my lean-to, I wanna put this pegboard up in there, um, in that storage, and there's actually quite a bit of stuff. Like for instance, when I'm spear fishing, I have a snorkel and a goggle. I, I can see it hanging on my porch, ready for me to go, maybe in a couple weeks. Um, but if that breaks, I need another one like right away, right? So I picked up a brand new one, but I'm gonna leave it in the package for now. Um, well, if I've got that pegboard, 
I can put that up there and then just hang, just like you would at a store, hang my brand new packaged one still up there. I'm also gonna do that with some of the extra tools I bought. Um, different tools and implements have that hanging up there on my pegboard, so that way, I just at a, at a glance, just kind of like walking down an aisle at a hardware store, I can see some of that stuff that I got there. Now, I do got some other display issues I'm working on for finding my tools and keeping them available. Stuff is in the garden shed, stuff is in my quail barn, stuff is in my lean-to, stuff is in my shipping container, stuff is in my house, stuff is in my truck. I've got tools scattered everywhere, and one of the problems I have, because I'm just not organized right now because I haven't had ample storage, is that uh, often it's easier for me to buy a new one than find the one I already own. So I'm winding up with multiples of some tools. One cool thing is that as my children grow and eventually leave home, I can pass some tools immediately onto them because I'm not gonna need three or four of something, um, especially if I'm organized, because I'll know where all of them are. But that'll give me a good opportunity to make good use of the extra ones. But if I organize it well, then I'll quit buying extra ones, which is even gonna be better, so. Those are two cool things from this trip that uh, I was expecting. You know, that's the reason I brought my trailer with on this trip. And heading out there gave me that opportunity. Besides dropping off the honey, making things easier for other people. Besides getting a chance to visit a bunch of uh, good friends of mine. It gave me a chance to finally get this stuff in my possession. Uh, finally on the tote. This was a recent offer, the pegboard. But I'm excited about it. Now I can start putting the stuff to use. Which is a whole story in itself. Whoa. But also, they, they, they fed us while we were there, and um, then we didn't really eat a whole lot besides that, and the boys did not bring a bottle of water this morning, so we were thirsty, and we wanted some stuff. I stopped in a Mexican store I know of, and one thing, I don't know if it's just from living somewhere really hot, like if you think about it, people who live really hot, they should be able to pull off some good ice cream. They should be able to pull off some good refreshing drinks, um, like a real thirst quencher. And I personally find that a lot of the gelados, the, the, the Mexican like popsicle ice cream guys are amazing. I like the rice pudding ones, um, but then also some of the drinks, especially the drinks with chunks in them. So if you got your uh, salvia, um, the aloe vera, the coconut, uh, chia seed, basil seed, uh, anything like that with the chunks in it, the uh, passion fruit, you know. They're super tasty. So we stopped in to get some refreshments and they really hit the spot. Absolutely, my spirit was revived. Um, but they had that bag of random bread. The one looked like maybe some sweet bread. Mama had just mentioned that a couple days ago with that cow head. So I thought maybe I'd try and see if we get her some of that while we were out. Darling, that's that, huh? So we can start running carrots through there? Not tonight, okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Tomorrow. Hey, it was a long day for me, Try too. I get some rest. And Mama picked up some different vegetables and stuff, too. Or not vegetables, fruits. To fruits. do with the carrots, right? Yeah, I uh, did. I also picked up some extra fruits while I was out. Okay. For juicing. Oh. Just because I knew I, I had had the juicer. Whoa, I would awesome. check it out. I bought a lot of stuff. Much bigger that we had, but I'm positive. Do you want to drink juice? Yeah. Great. I'm gonna take a little bite of this. Looks like it's got some pink dye in it. Yeah, probably. It's okay. Tastes okay. Tastes okay. I'm gonna take a little bite. Can I try a little piece? Yes, and then, are these guys like a sweet bread too? I don't know. Uh, the ones just look regular. That, I wasn't sure how... It's like a... It's, it's a random assortment. Some sort of just sesame a, bun, a giant lunch guy, and it then a couple croissants. Like that? That's how it came. In the bag? Yep, that's what it was. Really? We're seeing such an You would like to try it, please? You can't say, Mom, I would like to. You have to ask. May I please? Mom, may I please? You yes, you may. Don't just make a statement. Ask a question. Oh, thank you, daughter. Is it tasty? Yeah. Good. Hey, it's tasty right there. What are these? Those are like a croissant type thing. Well. 
Mm. Mm. From my perspective, that is bread. And it is sweet. So I'll go with the pan dulce. <laughs> yeah, that one definitely. Oh, I'm gonna plant you pine trees. Okay. Tomorrow. Do you know where? Uh, in the ground. That's a dad joke. I got like seven children. I can make a dad joke. My lady, can you do one special thing for me? Um, sure. Can you open that cooler? Oh no. Open the cooler. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's not gonna be like a tranche. Hold on, let me stand back. There's no tranches right now. Is there? What is it? That's good, you know.